The divides happen within families. You have brother against brother, father against son, and Islamist and secular isn't something very clear. You don't always know who's an, who's an Islamist and who's a secularist. Many people are somewhere in between. And, and both sides think they have the majority of the population on, on their side. So this leads to a kind of um, populism that we speak for the people and we're the right ones. Um, and as Marwan said, it leads to this kind of zero sum game. And you have a situation now where family members are informing on each other. And this is something we never saw under the Mubarak regime. Um, and that's going to take decades to undo these scars that are so deep, even within families right now. Democracy is not simply a matter of faith. And when I was telling people after the coup, my Egyptian friends and colleagues, listen, guys, you, you hate the brotherhood. Got it. Makes sense. But there is something called respecting democratic outcomes. And they would say, Shadi, you Americans and Westerners with your democracy and democratic outcomes, we're the ones living in this. So for them, they, they can put democracy, democracy to the side because for them, it's existential, it's raw, it's personal. If you have to suspend democracy for a year, five years, 10 years, so be it. And that's something that became, I think, very clear um, in Egypt and to some extent in the rest of the Arab world. You could, everyone says they believe in democracy, but do you really believe it when it matters? And there are some people in these societies who don't want the democratic process to go forward because they feel threatened by the rise of Islamists or the rise of religious sentiment. It doesn't even have to be explicitly Islamist. And that is understandable. It is understandable to be afraid if you're a secularist, if you don't believe that religion should be a public thing, and you're afraid that it's not just policies. Your lifestyle is going to be affected. The way you live, the way you dress, the way you interact with your family, the kind of social pressure that you feel on a daily basis, these are real things. So if we have these existential zero-sum divides in the Arab world, then maybe it's better for Americans to just kind of take a step back and say, you guys got your, your stuff to deal with, and we can't do a lot about it, because for you it's existential, and for us, you know, we're, we're kind of we're kind of tired tired about the tired with the Middle East, and there's this real Middle East fatigue in this country, right? But I think a major major opportunity was lost, um, and that was part of the hope that I felt in 2011. It wasn't just Arabs claiming their own future; it was that maybe finally, after decades of supporting autocratic regimes, you know, we as Americans would finally get it right and say that didn't work. It didn't lead to stability, and it provoked all of these uprisings because people wanted more. And in a way, we could have atoned for our sins. We could have tried to get it right this time. And I mean, this is a, a longer discussion. I think it's, an, it's also a somewhat tragic discussion, is we didn't do that. There was this initial optimism, but it wasn't sustained. And we kind of withdrew to kind of business as usual, the old pre-2011 politics. And there wasn't actually a lot of certainly economic support, but just more generally political and moral support for the Arab uprisings. You know, I was of the opinion that this was one of the world historical moments on par with 1848 or 1989, that the Arab world was going through a transformation and it was time for the international community to step up to really, to really seize the moment and help, and help Arabs move in that positive direction. And I, you know, and I don't have a lot to say about, I think, I think the opportunity was lost. I think the window has largely closed. And I think it's going to haunt us for years, if not decades to come. The Islam were, you know, they did not go for a constitution at first. They went for elections. And once the elections were... Uh, won by the Islamists last year, the Islamists took uh, that uh, win at a particular point in time to mean that they can basically dictate what society is going to be like at all times. They pushed through a constitution that did not enjoy consensus among all forces in society. And as a result, the same street that brought them to power went against them this year. Unfortunately, that has been mitigated 
by the intervention by the military in what, in my view, has been a coup. And today, the secular elements in Egypt are exercising the same policies that they accused the Islamists of exercising last year. So if the Islamists ruled exclusively, today the secular elements are ruling exclusively as well. And as a result, the Egyptians today are involved in a zero-sum game where the sum is zero. And whereas General Sisi is a popular man today, I doubt that in a year's time, once people look at the economic performance of Egypt, that he will hold that popularity for much longer. But that also is not negative. In my view, what this has also is showing us is that the region where, the, the era where ideology basically ruled in the Arab world, whether it was secular ideology or religious ideology, is coming to an end. The polls are very clear, by the way, on these points. For those who want to read them, the Arab street in Egypt, the Egyptians, by all polls, are extremely conservative and extremely religious. Over 90% of Egyptians identify with themselves as religious and conservative. However, that same street does not want its government to tell it how to be conservative and religious. Seven, talk to any taxi driver in Egypt and he would tell you this. I know how to be a Muslim. I don't need the government to tell me about how to be a Muslim. I want them to worry about the economy. 70% of Egyptians, 70% want their government to worry about the economy. 2% want their government to worry about ideology. And in my view, that is the real battle in the Arab world today. It should not be a battle uh, <coughs> of secularism against Islamism. Because if the Arab world makes it such a battle, then whoever wins that battle becomes simply the new dictator of the Arab world. And we are seeing this very clearly in Egypt. Whoever makes it a battle for pluralism, in other words, to put in place institutions that pave the ground for stability and natural stability and prosperity in the future, as I think the Tunisians are doing, is going to be successful.